This lesson deals with mesh current analysis with dependent sources. You can find these notes in the ECE 201 ebook in chapter 4, starting on page 12. Consider the following example where I've got one independent voltage source, four resistances, and one controlled source. This controlled source is controlled by the voltage across this resistance. I'm going to solve for V out here, the resistance looking in, which is the ratio of this voltage to this current, and then the ratio of the output current to the input current. Our mesh analysis by inspection technique requires that we have only voltage sources, so I'll need to convert this to a voltage source. You can source transform a controlled source, just got to be careful not to source transform the controlling variable. Now since I want to solve for the current in this resistance, I also don't want to source transform this because, again, I won't be able to get this exact current in the transform resistance. Pick this resistor instead. I'll take these two then and do a source transformation. So I'll have a series resistance and a series voltage source whose value is 100 times 0.1 V sub X, so 10 V sub X. And again, the current that flows in this resistance is not the same as this one. It creates the same effect outside the yellow box, but inside it's quite different. Let's assign mesh currents I1 and I2. Let's find our unknowns in terms of these mesh currents. So the current that flows in this mesh times 5K would give me V out. I1 is equal to I sub S, so the ratio of V sub S to I1 will be Rn. And then the ratio of I out to I sub S would be the ratio of I2 to I1. Since I have two meshes, I'll form a blank 2 by 2 matrix. And then on the left hand side of the equation, I'll put a blank vector column of, of two rows in one column. What goes in row one, column one, is the sum of the resistances in mesh one. So that's 50 plus 1,000 plus 100. What's common between meshes one and two is 100 ohms, so that'll go in row one, column two, but we're going to negate the sum of the common resistances. Then if I go around the mesh counterclockwise, I can record all the drops in voltage that I see. So I see a minus 10 V sub X plus V sub S. Let's go around mesh two, I see a 5K and a 100 ohm resistor. That's going to go in row two, column two. And then what's common between meshes two and one, I'm going to sum those resistances in the gate And again, it's going to be symmetric here. What's between meshes one and two is also between meshes two and one. Go around the mesh counterclockwise, I see a drop in voltage of 10 V sub X. Now my unknowns in this problem are I1 and I2. V sub S, although again not specified, is assumed to also be known. But I do have another unknown here, and that's V sub X. But that's the controlling voltage for our control source, and we can express any voltage or any current in terms of mesh currents. So the mesh current I1 is flowing through the 1K resistor. That gives me V sub X. Now on this side of the equation, I've got 10 and minus 10 V sub X, so let's multiply this by 10. So 10 V sub X is 10K times I1. We bring things from the left-hand side to the right-hand side of the equation, we're going to change the sign. So we bring this over here, it's going to be equal to a plus 10 V sub X, and then that's equal to 10K times I1, and that's associated with column one. Add it to this term right here. Bringing this on the other side of the equation, we have a minus 10 V sub X, and that's gonna be equal to minus 10K times I1. So this column again is multiplied by I1, minus 10K times I1. Combine all those. Now I've got my two unknowns, and then my input that I'm gonna leave unspecified, but we'll see that it drops out of ratios because it is a linear circuit. Again, the diagonal, we had before, actually it may change sign, didn't in this case, but the off diagonals are no longer symmetric. Let's solve for I1. Bring this over into column one. This times this is V sub S times 5.1K minus zero, and then divided by the determinant of our resistive matrix. So the determinant of this then is this times this minus this times this. This product is 56.865 million, and then I've got three minus signs here, so I've got one left over, 1.01 million is the product. So my result is in terms of V sub S. It's turned out to be 91.308 micro. It's all for I2 by bringing this side of the equation into this column. So I've got a zero here, a minus a minus 10.1K times V sub S. And I've got the same denominator I had before, and that turns out now to give me 180.825 micro times V sub S. Now we can go back to our formulas on our previous page. It's all for V out which was 5K times I2, gives me 0.904 times V sub S. I'm going to put that in your notation. The ratio of V sub S to I1 is Rn, 
So V sub S and then I1 was equal to 91.308 micro V sub S. The V sub S is cancel. And the reciprocal of that is 10.95K. I out was I2, IS was I1. The V sub S again drops out and I get a value of 1.98. Let's take a look at another example where I can't do a source transformation. This is also an example from ECE 302. This is another equivalent circuit of a transistor, but in terms of its DC equivalent. So here I got one, two, three resistors, got two voltage sources, and one dependent source. Let's assign a mesh current I1 and I2, but to write my equations by inspection, I would need to source transform this. Well, I don't have a parallel resistance. I actually have a series resistance. What's interesting about this is that this resistance doesn't affect this, because it's gonna force the same current to flow through it. Here's some tricks we're gonna play with electronic circuits to be able to drive loads. All right, since I can't do the source transformation, let me do a super mesh. Let me go around this outer mesh I was not go around this one, but go around the outside of it because I have only voltage sources and resistances. Okay, I'm going to assign my drops across the resistors this way. It's in a clockwise direction. So let's just start here. You can start anywhere. The rise in voltage is 0.7. The drop is RB times I1. And then I've got a drop of V sub CC. And then I've got a drop of RE times the current I2. So I have an equation with I1, I2. I'm going to solve for the current I sub B. So what is I sub B? Well, it's equal to, again, it's a controlling variable for this controlled source, but it's equal to the negative of I1. So I have this equation then in terms of I sub B and then another unknown I2. We need another constraint. Let's take a look at the controlled source itself. Well, it's between two meshes. This current in this direction is gonna be equal to I1 minus I2. So beta IB is equal to I1 minus I2, but I1 is a minus I sub B. I could bring this on the other side of the equation as a plus I sub B, pull that out, and I've got a beta I sub B, and that would be equal to minus I2. So we have two equations and two unknowns. We're assuming that we know the value of the resistances and the value of all the voltage sources. Let's go back to this original equation then. I want to bring this over here so I get VCC minus 0 0.7. I'll put this on the other side of the equation as a negative RBI1 and REI2. Now I1 is equal to minus I sub B, so this becomes a plus RBIB. And minus I2 is equal to beta plus one IB. So I got that term. So now I can solve for I sub B. Pull out the I sub B, so I've got RB and then R sub B times beta plus one. And that's the value of the current I sub B. This equation has an interesting term again in it. I've got the resistor R sub B multiplied by beta plus one. Now beta is the scale factor of our control source and it's adding one to that is what's multiplying this resistance. It makes this resistance look like it's bigger by a factor of beta plus one. This is what controlled sources do. They change resistance levels in circuits. These are some examples of mesh analysis with dependent sources.